right, this unit will, uh, it's actually the second half of unit two, and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, limits and fits and uh, how you get the numbers, basically. Yeah, for example, we talked a little while ago, remember the pin fitting inside of the hole and what size was, that's real important, what size is. But what I always found out when I was working with geometric tolerancing or working with any kind of designs, I have a pin that wants to go inside that hole. You see it wants to fit inside of there? Where do I get the number? I mean, when I say plus three or minus two or what it is, or I have another example here where I have that center hole and I have this pin that's going in there. I mean, how do I come up with those numbers? I mean, plus one, minus four, and it's really actually pretty simple. And I think Scott has a, a, a standard that he'd like to tell you about. Yeah, it has to do with what type of fit are you looking for. You want a, a clearance fit, you want a press fit, are you looking for a running fit? That sort of thing is uh, all determined by these uh, limits and fits here that I'm going to show you. So this is actually standards on this stuff. I mean, people have been putting pins and holes together for lots of years now, so they actually put together a standard that tells you what size tolerances you put there depending on what fits you're looking for. So these are your fits for your, uh, your American uh, standards, your inch tolerances, and then you also have preferred metric limits and fits for your metric stuff. That's in this standard. So how does this work now? Well, there's actually uh, five different types of fits. And actually, there's really three main types. There's kind of some subsets also. But there's what we call running and sliding fits. There's locational fits. And then there's force fits. Those are the three main types. Now, I kind of have a, uh, a chart here. And there's actually more information in the standard about these, those preferred metric limits and fits and the cylindrical parts things. You should probably look at that, but this kind of giving you an overview on how these charts work. This, uh, this one here is, these are your holes. All your holes are the hatched ones and your shafts are your dark ones here. So what they're showing here is, remember the running and sliding fits, there's always a clearance between the parts. So you see how there's always a clearance between the hole and the shaft. The hole and the shaft, there's always a little bit of min clearance in there because you need that lubrication between the parts. Now your lo clearance location fits, your LCs, those are the ones that could be line to line at worst case. You see how they're all line to line, line to line, and right at LC6, they start getting some positive min clearance worst case. And all the way up to an LC11, really loose fit between them, a lot of clearance between these parts. Then you have your transition fits. Sometimes it's clearance, sometimes it's interference because they overlap a little bit. Your interference fits, these where the, the shaft is always bigger than the hole. And same thing with your force and shrink fits. This is where you get the shaft a lot bigger than the hole. So kind of the, the different fits and kind of a graph showing and how they go together like this. All right, so let's do an example. How do you use this standard and how do you figure out these sizes? So first thing we'll do is we have an example here. And the example is we have a pilot shaft and a hole. Now what this is here is this is your shaft on the pink part and then your hole is over here. Now how do we figure out the size tolerance on this shaft and figure out the size tolerance on this hole? have your hole, which will be an H8, and your shaft will be an H7. So what it is, is you take the 1.8, you add plus 1.6, minus 0, your shaft will be plus 0, minus 1. Now these are going to be on thousandths of an inch, so this is 1.6 thousandths of an inch, so you have to add a couple of zeros in front when you actually add them up. Well, so, that makes it pretty simple, doesn't it? Just uh, looking up, it tells you what the size of the hole is and tells you what the size of the pin is. And... Yeah, really the tough part, toughest part is picking your fit. I mean, what type of fit do you want? You want uh, an LC3, an LC5, an LC6, and sometimes that's a little bit subjective which one you go with, but uh, as soon as you make your decision, then it's really easy to look at these charts. And I think the standard gives you some guidance on that too, doesn't it? Yeah, if you read in the standard, you know, they, they have all these uh, different uh, d descriptions on what all the fits are until you, you go down the description and you say, yeah, that's the one I want right there and that's the number you pick. So now that you kind of know how it works, uh, what I have is a little exercise for you. This is workshop exercise 2.2. And just uh, first starts off with a couple of uh, questions about uh, just about the types of fits. And then near the end there, uh, you have some, uh, some examples that you have to try, where you have to look at some of those charts that are in the book and figure out what numbers you're supposed to put on the drawing. So if you want to pause the tape here and go through these exercises, and then I'll go over the answers afterwards.